Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Kathy McCory. I'm the CEO here at the Chamber of Commerce in Issaquah, and we're happy to be bringing you another recorded webinar today. Um, we started the recorded webinars a couple months ago now um, because they are going to be added into a free library of tools and resources for the business community and on our Issaquah Chamber YouTube page. So today we have a special guest. We have Chris Chavez. He's a videographer and a social media marketer and an actor. And Chris began, began his love of film on the front side of the camera, pursuing a degree in theater and acting in a variety of short films across his home state of New Mexico. In 2017, Chris created a popular YouTube channel focused around entertainment news igniting his passion for content creation and filmmaking. In late 2019, Chris launched Chavez Creative Company, a brand agency that helps small and medium-sized businesses promote their business through creative, engaging content. In early 2021, Chris launched Chavez Creative on YouTube to help businesses understand the why behind video marketing and how vital it is in providing visibility towards your product and services. And I just wanna stop in, in the middle of his bio here just to reiterate how important this is and how thrilled we are that Chris, you are willing to share some of this important knowledge with all of us today. So you can learn more about Chavez Creative Company by visiting his website at www.chavezcreative.co or follow him on Instagram at chavezcreative.co. And I believe that might be underscores in between each one. So, so Chavez yep. underscore creative underscore co. Learning Perfect. the why behind marketing will help in your crafting valuable content that will get you noticed. So without further ado, Chris, I want you to have all the time um, available to share this great information with everyone today. And if um, any of our um, people watching live here have questions, you can certainly type them into the chat as they occur to you. We will have a Q&A session at the end and we can go back through your questions or if you wanna wait until the end and type them in there, then that's okay too. Chris, please. It's all Perfect. yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you everyone for attending. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you take something from this and apply it to whatever your business is. So let me share my screen and we will get started. So here we go. So the value of video marketing. So before we begin, um, there are a couple of things that we are going to cover. We're gonna talk about the understanding of the branding golden circle how to speak to your target audience and overcoming on-camera shyness with Instagram. It's, I, I, I'm excited to dive into that one, um, but there is a one question that I want to ask you guys. So what does video marketing specifically mean to you as a business? So to me, video is inspirational storytelling that provides not only value, but showcases the heart of the presenter. Now you'll notice that some of these words are kind of highlighted. The reason is because these are key words that kind of make up creating marketing content. So it needs to be inspirational and need, you need to tell a story. Storytelling is the number one ingredient that's going to make your product stand out or your services stand out. It also needs to provide some kind of value, something that's going to teach the business, their business is something that they didn't know yesterday. And of course, having heart, having the passion behind what you're doing and what you're presenting, whatever it is that you're creating, it's going to show exactly to your target audience that you are passionate and you really care about the things that you are trying to, to uh, educate them on. So with all these, where, where does this lead up? And like, so we kind of know a little bit about storytelling and being inspir in, uh, inspirational, but have you ever heard of the branding golden circle? So what the golden circle is, and honestly, it's three questions, what, how, and why. So the golden circle helps in defining your business as you can better understand how to add value to your marketing strategy. What we do, why we do it, how we do it. These questions are very important because it helps you into formulate exactly the message that you need to relay, the, the value that you need. So 
what I want you to do is I want you to remember these, the what, how, and the why, because we are gonna go back and circle this, no pun intended, here in a bit. So if you have a pen or a, a notepad or something that's next to you, write, I want you to write this down. So within your product or service, tell me the what, and then tell me the why as to why uh, your products or service, what are their pain points, how you're gonna address their pain points. And also the how, how does your service provide these things? So write these down because we are going to go back and talk about these a little bit later. So the brand and going circle is something that's very important. It will help you in crafting valuable content, trust me. So we're talking about all this, but why does it matter? What's the point in creating or learning about the brand to go in circle. Why, the, what's the point? So details are definitely what you need to remember. Details matter to those that are looking for services like yours. So you need to understand the meaning behind creating something. Now I say this, I say this a lot in a lot of uh, my videos that I do on my YouTube channel. It's if you create content for the sake of creating content, then it's, you're pretty much just wasting your time and your audience's time because you're neglecting the why. You're neglecting the whole meaning behind creating some kind of promotion, some kind of ad, some kind of content, whatever it is. You need to make sure that you're understanding what you're doing. So your audience completely matters and your message completely matters. Everything leads back to why. And you'll notice yet again, two things are highlighted on here, audience and message. Well, the reason why we have audience message on or uh, highlighted on here is because you need to understand your audience. So you know the why, you understand your product, your service, you know how to build that, you, you understand the meaning behind all that, but how do you honestly branch that out and, and, and connect to that audience? So if you don't understand your audience, then you really aren't gonna understand what kind of strategies to utilize, what kind of, uh, what platform am I going to utilize to promote these, uh, my product or service? What is the demographic? What is the, you know, there's so many different little elements that make up your audience and you need to understand them. So how do we do that? Well, there's two things I want to talk about. So answer the questions of your audience before they even ask it. So it's your job to provide those answers to the issues that plague your audience to show them why your product or service should be consider, uh, considered. Show them, not tell. That's, that's a big thing. You wanna show them why these things are worth their time and their money. So you need to do your homework, find out what their pain point is, what their trouble spot is, and speak to that. Help them realize that you know whatever, whatever it is that you're offering, you can answer their question with whatever it is that you do. And that also leads to listening listen to your audience, listen to what they're saying. If there's something that they're really struggling with, you know, start that dialogue, start the conversation of, of well, you know, I provide the service that actually handles X, Y, and Z. So to fully understand your audience, it is very important that you listen. You listen to them, show empathy, start that dialogue, start that personal connection, because everything is about connection. So how do you, there's, there's other little tips that you could do to, to know your audience. And there's some tips that we're going to talk about. So one, conduct a user survey. So I've done this a few times within my YouTube channel of just understanding where the need is for video or specifically, where do companies uh, label video in their, their list of things that are really high importance? And so I, I wanted to see where that was. So I, I, I created a survey, a little poll, and I got the, the answer that I needed and I went from there when I started the dialogue and the whole thing snowballed from there. Uh, keep a, an eye out for your competitors. It's also a big thing because if you keep an eye out on what they're doing wrong or if they're doing right, you know, you can kind of keep a head up, uh, a leg up on that one. And also understanding your analytics. So if you do a lot of social media marketing, so let's say Instagram, which we'll get to in a minute here in a bit, um, it tells you exactly why your uh, post is doing it's doing great or what's lacking in it. So you can kind of see what is working and what's not working. And that's, that's fantastic because it's a great growth. It's a great learning opportunity to figure out why this post didn't work last week, but the post this week did phenomenal. So learn your analytics. And of course, listen, like I said before, listen and act, listen to your audience and definitely act upon what it is that they are talking about, because you can be that service that's going to answer all those pain points. 
So we understand all these target audience. We know a little bit about our business, but wh what about stepping in front of the camera? What about presenting when it comes to something like this, doing a presentation or stepping in front of the camera for uh, Facebook or Instagram? Let's talk about stage fright. <laughs> so stage fright is very, very real. Having fear of the camera is a big, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big hurdle to overcome if you don't have that experience. But how can you understand the fear? How can you get over that hump? Well, I believe that the main thing that leads people to having stage fright is false belief. So what is false belief? So it's honestly an assumption that you have built in your mind of how something will play out. That's what's holding you back from fully achieving the thing that you know you're capable of. So <clears throat> the big thing is if you and I were having a cup of coffee right now, and I ask you a question about your business, you're just going to go straight off to the top of your head and we're just going to have a great conversation. Now, if I ask you that same question, but put a camera in front of you, you are going to kind of climb up. You're going to get a little, a little nervous. And the reason behind that is you can't see the people that you're presenting to. You can't see the reaction. And in turn, if you can't see who you're talking to, then you're going to think you're being judged. And if you think you're being judged, then you're going to think that the message that you're trying to relay is pointless. And so you start to get in your own head and you're creating these false beliefs of, well, maybe I'm not doing this correctly, or maybe this isn't cut out for me. So yet again, assumption, what you're capable of, judge and message. Those are the highlighting key terms in this uh, section. Now, how do you eliminate false beliefs? How can you take this thing that paralyzes you and kind of turn it around? Well, there are three things. So learn what installed those beliefs. So look back on those key moments of something that really just <laughs> turned your world upside down. Uh, I have a good example of that. So I, uh, like Kathy said, I have a background in theater. And I remember doing one performance where we're in the middle of the show and I forgot all my lines. It just, my brain just forgot everything that I studied. And it was the most paralyzing experience when you have a ton of people looking at you and you don't remember anything. So that leads to the next part. Think about the worst case scenario. So the next time I was on stage doing a performance, I remembered that moment that I had and how I prepared for that is I made sure I knew the story inside and out. That way, if I did forget a line, I can ad lib and I could continue that story with, you know, with the same contents of the dialogue that was written. So learn about what went wrong and think about how you can overcome that should it happen again. And also, this is a big one, think about positive beliefs. So we think about negative things all the time. What if my internet goes out in this presentation? What if my slide doesn't work? What if I say ums all the time? You know, don't think about the negatives. Also think about the positive things that can come out of social media marketing or being in front of the camera. You, it's growth. So doing all this is going to be positive. It's going to help you grow into, into the presenter that you wanna be. So this all leads to Instagram. So I know what you're asking or what you're thinking, how does this, how does being, having stage fright lead to Instagram and how can Instagram help me in overcoming this? Well, let me explain. So Instagram is a very huge marketing tool that has a lot of fun little uh, services with inside of it that's going to help your business. And there are three tools specifically that I want to hone in on that we are going to use to help you overcome this stage fright. That stories, reels, and Instagram TV. The more you learn about these three uh, features, you're going to understand not only social media marketing and how to create that, but also how to overcome your stage fright. So let's 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 dive into these three, just in case you haven't utilized story reels or Instagram TV. So stories or vertical photos or videos that last up to 15 seconds, they'll disappear for hours. So it'll teach you to to create short form content. So it's something short, very simple, and very, it's like a, a, a short little promo, a tiny little ad. So then we go on to reels. This time from 15 seconds, we go to 60 seconds. So now you're gonna have a little bit more flexibility in, in customizing what you create. You can add some uh, gifts, you can add some music, uh, fun little effects you can add to it. So now you're gonna jump from, like I said, 50 seconds to 60 seconds. Instagram TV, this is where it gets a little bit longer. It's a long form of content creation. You're gonna to go to 15 minutes or shorter depending on what you wanna create. 
Now, Instagram TV also has its own app. So that's beside the point. But if you ever see Instagram, uh, uh, the app for Instagram, that's why it's separate. But it's also inside the uh, Instagram platform um, by itself. So you know what stories, reels, and Instagram TV, what they represent, what they mean, what they do. So how does this tie in? Well, remember at the very beginning, we learned about the brand and going circle, the what, hows, and why, and how I wanted you to kind of write down what your business does within those questions. We well, now think about it with Instagram. So the what in stories. So you have 15 seconds. So these, you're going to talk about what your business does. Just a short introduction about what your business does. Nothing complex, just a little introduction. Then you're going to go a step up 60 seconds in, uh, in reels in the how. You're gonna, so you're going to keep that same process. Did so you see how this goes? And then with Instagram TV, 15 minutes, do the same thing. Now, the thing about this is it's going to teach you beautifully in these little increments of time on how to keep your time limit down when creating something, how to utilize social media, because now you're going to know how to use stories, reels, and Instagram TV. Also, it's fantastic practice for you to introduce yourself tell us the, the middle part of your business and then give us the hook at the end. So it's a wonderful, wonderful way to build your confidence. So there is a little bit of homework, a little bit of a challenge that I have for you guys. And what I challenge you is I want you to do this. So for a second, just move Instagram aside, film yourself for those same increments of time, record the what, prop up your phone, record exactly what it is that you wanna say within your introduction for your business. Then do the how, record yourself, you know, 60 seconds, a little bit longer and do the same thing of talking about the middle part of like, what, you know, how does your business help uh, other companies and then do the why. So when you do the why, you want to capsulate it and close it with a call to action. So it's, this is a great learning opportunity, a great way to figure out how you're going to structure your conversation, how you're going to structure the way that you present yourself on film and learn social media. So once you get familiarized with these increments of time, then if you're comfortable enough, post it to Instagram. And then from that point on, you are going to learn how to create this and you're gonna feel way more comfortable because of these three steps. You just keep, keep, keep repeating the process, repeating the process. I did this a lot when I created my uh, Instagram channel or my uh, YouTube channel for my business. I didn't know how I wanted to structure it. So I propped up my, my camera and I just recorded and I played, I played and I did all kinds of different variations of introductions and you know my background, how, how I'm dressed. But the thing is it's consistency and practice. So I challenge you, if you're up for it, <laughs> I challenge you to record yourself and then at some point put it up on social media. And to close it out guys, before we go into Q and A, remember it's personality and storytelling. The thing that makes up good, successful marketing is your personality. Humans buy from humans. And you, you're you not going to go to a TED Talk with someone that's monotone and not really passionate about the things that they do. What drives you to that TED Talk is the personality. And what else do they do in that TED Talk? They tell unbelievable stories that really captures your imagination and captures exactly all the questions you have. They're already answered. That is exactly what success means when it comes to presenting, being on camera, social media marketing. All, all these things are encapsulated into personality and storytelling. So if, if you take anything from this, be personal. Use that, that unique personality that you have and don't hide it. You talk with your hands, talk with your hands. If you have a weird accent, use that weird accent. Utilize what you have because no one is like you. And that's the great thing about making yourself stand out from the other competitors in whatever business that you own because you can offer something that they can't. And you just gotta, you just have to have that, that consistency, that passion and the willingness to grow and to you know, make little, little bad videos to make good videos because everyone started out somewhere. I have really horrible videos that no one will see, <laughs> but I have horrible videos that have just been just horrible. Just, it's not even worth showing, um, but that's one thing I wanted to, to kind of make sure that you guys understand is personality and storytelling. So before we get into the question and answer part, guys, if you want any more information about what I do in my services, 
I have my email address, my website. And also if you like some of these tips and advices into uh, being better on camera or to understanding social media, please check out my YouTube channel. Uh, in YouTube, just type in Javis Creative Company. I cover topics like this weekly. So thank you guys so much. And if you have any questions about anything, let's open the floor up to uh, Q&A. Excellent, Chris, that's fantastic. I'm gonna scroll down the chat here for you just to kind of see, and while I'm doing this, I have a question. I just, I was so busy taking notes. I missed the how much time you give the why. So I got the what at 15 seconds, the how mm -hmm. at 60 seconds, but I missed the why. The, the why? So the why is going to be 60 seconds. So it's 15 seconds, 60 seconds, and then 15 minutes. Okay. So yep. 15 minutes, okay. Yep, so it's there, It's a perfect increment of time to, to learn. It's, it's, it's great. Instagram uh, is a wonderful tool. So if you haven't used it, it's, it's great to use. Excellent. And then, um, <laughs> I'm, I, again, I'm looking to see if, and, and Chris, I don't know, I see lots of comments. Um, <clears throat> So um, I, I, great idea. I hadn't thought about the stories, reels, and Insta TV as what, how, and why. So maybe you can kind of touch on that a little bit more. That intrigued us. Yeah. So I I use Instagram a lot within my business, and whenever I talk about it with a lot of my clients, they just don't have the experience in you utilizing it. And so I was trying to think of a way that can bridge the gap between understanding why you create content to begin with and a place to put it. And so it, it kind of worked perfectly when I was playing around with, with Instagram, trying to figure out a good method. And those three, uh, Instagram TV reels and uh, stories were just absolutely perfect because they, they offer so much teaching and, and like I said, and learning how to create the content, why you're creating the content and, and, and everything involving that and it was it's I mean there's probably other other little things I can pluck out of Instagram but those are the three that I that I think are perfect for brand new social media marketing um, users or just creating content in general that's great and then somebody asked about your podcast why don't you tell us a little bit about those well the the YouTube um, so the YouTube is a uh, it, it's a weekly show where I, I, I come up with a lot of different uh, answers to questions that I've received from either clients or just conversations I've had with other business owners. And I try to make it an educational place where it's, it's, it's something that everyone's learning, everyone's growing with. And I, like, for a good example, last episode, I talked about how important failure is and why failure is you should embrace it. And so I, I break that apart and I talk about why and I use marketing as an example of why failure is fantastic. Great, and somebody's asking real quick here, um, posting something back in the chat room for them. Um, and then um, I, I wanted to touch on the, um, Oh, what did you call it? Um, hold on, I gotta go back up sure. in the chat. There's one more question up here. Um, oh, the call to action. So yes. what does a call to action look like? I mean, for, for you, what is your call to action? So or maybe just give us one example. Yeah, so a call to action is exactly what I did at the end of my presentation. Of if you would like to learn more, please check out my and then whatever it is that you want to promote. Without adding a call to action in your social media posts or anything, um, you're going to leave your audience with no, no way to reach you. There's no way to actually use that service to use that product. I mean, and it, and, it, and it doesn't have to be something that you're selling. If it's something like my YouTube channel, for example, if I want people to understand and learn about the things that I, I talk about, then, you know, the call to action would be, you know, please uh, visit my YouTube channel to learn more about, and then X, Y, and Z. So it's, it's a wonderful way. It's, it's a, it's a, it, without having a call to action, it's very weird. Imagine going to 
uh, Amazon and putting something in your cart and then there's no buy now. There's, there's no call to action to actually get that product. Okay. That's a great analogy. <laughs> you can you can put it in your cart, but you can't get it home. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. And then someone asked about um, some of the Instagram pages, maybe that have um, have uh, um, motivated you, or ones that that you think are great examples. Of course, we know yours, but are there others out there that intrigue you that are top of mind that you think are great examples for us to also look at? Yeah, top of mind, I think of, um, and probably everyone knows who this is, uh, Gary Vandercheck. And the reason why I, I, I go to Gary um, is because he has these posts where some of them are very simple, that they just drive a, a perfect message into something that you're going through at that time. Or also, also, he'll post something that's really profound that you didn't even think about, or you didn't know how to formulate that question, and he just answered it. So he does it very well where he answers the question before you have a chance to ask it in everything that he does. And, and his posts do that. And, and that's why I, I kind of get some ideas from what he does and kind of morph it into me, to my personality, what I do. Great. And, and then along that same line, are there any businesses that you can think of that, that do a, also a great job on Instagram, just more like corporate um, companies that that again, top of mind that you think do have, have great marketing mess messages on Instagram? Yeah. So like a, like a mainstream kind of yes. business. Yeah. Um, a, honestly, a lot of them that, that top of my mind um, are in the, in uh, like Nike, Nike or Adidas, because okay. they, I mean, everyone, you get to that point in a business where all you need to do is put out a logo and you know what it means. Nike, Apple, you know, these things we understand, but Nike has a way in, in providing really, really interesting and provocative um, and inspiring content that that doesn't have an age range. It doesn't. It does. It looks at every race and it looks at it's 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 everything and everyone. And I, I think something like that is so. It's it is inspiring. I mean, because it's it's clothing. You know what I mean? It's sportswear. It's it's you know. But what they represent and how they represent that in Instagram. Uh, is very inspirational. That is great. So um, with a final call to action, what message would you like to leave with us today before we break away? Yeah. So guys, the big thing with me is education. So understanding why you're making these things, you can't just create something to create something. So if to, to sum this all up in conclusion, before you create your next campaign for whatever it is, ask yourself why. Otherwise your message will get lost and there's no reason to create something for the sake of creating something. Think about your audience, think about the why and success will come in that, in that post. You just have to be consistent, ask the why and everything will fall in place. That's great. Chris, I want to thank you again. And I want to just one more time, your Instagram is at Chavez underscore creative underscore CO. Correct. So that's yep. where we want to go and find you for more information and, and great tips on a regular basis. And then again, we're going to be saving this recording onto the Chambers YouTube channel as well, so that um, businesses have a place to go if they, you know, if they can't remember, um, if they haven't um, followed you on Instagram, they can always come to the Chamber and find this great video on the Chamber site as well. So I wanna thank you. I wanna thank all of our attendees today. Our next webinar, um, which is free to everyone, by the way, anyone can sign up for uh, uh, one of the webinars. Um, our next one is Wednesday, October 27th at 2 p.m. It's going to be on mental wellness and pre presented by Era Living. Um, uh, Mallory Mixford is a clinical social worker and she's licensed as a clinical social worker specializing in workplace stress and best practices to support staff. So this is, this is going to be um, something that we can all just kind of take to um, 
uh, heart in keeping an eye on our friends, our peers, our coworkers. We know it's a really stressful time out there. This pandemic has lasted much longer than any of us had thought, and yet our lives are full. They keep going with our businesses and our families. It's a lot of juggling we're doing out there right now. And just to be aware of how we can keep our eye open um, when maybe somebody we care about or work with really could use some help and support. So um, that's our next one again, October 27th. And thank you, Chris Chavez. Once again, this was a fabulous learning experience. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for uh, sticking in and hanging out with me. I appreciate it.